So in order to get the container development kit running on Windows, you go to developers.redhat.com, which also has a nice link to uh, the advanced Linux commands cheat sheet I wrote a couple of months back. Either register if you don't have an account yet or log in directly if you do. I'm going to log in because I already have one. I'm going to log in with my GitHub account and I get uh, landed back on the developers.redhat.com homepage. Now, if you do this for the first time logging in, you probably have to accept some terms and conditions. And accepting those terms and, terms and conditions gives you access to a free Red Hat developer subscription, which is a free um, subscription that allows you to set up an OpenShift Enterprise cluster on your laptop and actually download a free copy of RHEL um, as well. Now, I already have um, accepted those terms and conditions, so I just click the download button and I end up on a link with a page with a lot of downloads. Uh, I scroll all the way down to where it says Red Hat Development Suite and click the download button. This brings me to a page where I can actually download the software. Um, there we go, it's about a 45 megabyte um, binary. And now I'm gonna switch to my desktop and actually execute that binary to get everything installed. So I'm going to switch to the Explorer. I'm going to double click the binary, accept that. Some extracting done in the background. This is not a really speedy laptop, so this all might take a while. Um, I will have to log in right now with the account I used to log into um, the Red Hat, to, to, to developers.redhat.com. Um, this is the reason you need to set up a password um, for that account. And if you do not, if you haven't set up a password yet, please log into developers.redhat.com and set a password for the account as well, even if you log in through social um, federation. Log in here. And then I could just select the installation folder where I want everything installed. I'm going to leave that to, uh, to that path right there. And what I need to do now is select which components I need, I, I want to have installed. And I'm going to install the Developer Studio, which is a special version of Eclipse, uh, specially tailored for the use of the, uh, the Container Development Kit and JBoss Java development. I'm going to install the OpenJDK as well. I'm going to install the Container Development Kit. I do not need Compose right now. I do not need to uh, do anything with um, Docker Compose files. Um, I'm not going to use Hyper-V because that performed well, let's say it didn't perform really well on this laptop. I do have Oracle VirtualBox installed. You need to install it before you install the development suite. I'm going to use that to install to to run the OpenShift um, virtual machine later on, and we need to install SigWin as well in order to have a proper shell on Windows. So I'm going to click Download and Install, and everything will be installed in the background. So when we're done, uh, the installation is finished. Now we're going to click this big blue button, Open Red Hat Developer Studio, right there. Um, this is an initial um, startup of JBoss Developer Studio, so this might take uh, a couple of seconds as well. Accept this. A couple of components need to be initialized in the background now. And there we are. So I'm going to maximize screen here. So what you can see, I have no projects right now, but I do already have a connection to a container development kit set up for me. So I can um, start running any Java project I create and run that on uh, the CDK automatically. I'm going to start this. And what you, what you should be able to see here is um, I need to log in here again. Let me paste my password in there. Um, start my VM. And what's actually happening in the background now is that VirtualBox open up that console. Is uh, There will be a VM created in here that will be uh, where my container development kit is going to live. Let's give that a second to happen. As I said, it's not really speedy. There's the, the Minishift um, VM starting up right now. So when a Minishift startup has completed, and you can tell by looking at this service tab over here, and it says start it, uh, then, then the whole uh, Minishift startup has completed. Uh, we can click the OpenShift Explorer, and we can see that we have uh, the default project that has been created for us. And we can click uh, Show in Web Console, so we can take a look at the OpenShift login screen. Um, to prove that this is actually really working. Now, the default password for this um, open for the for the CDK's uh, developer and developer. We can log into this, and uh, we have our own OpenShift instance running on a Windows laptop. And there we go.
As always, thanks for watching. Um, if you like this video, if you like the channel, please let me know, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Also check out the blog at 100thingsatwizard.com and follow me on Twitter at, uh, at Maxim Burgerhout. If you have any remaining questions, feel free to send me an email or send me a Twitter message and I'll try to, to follow up with you. And uh, for now, I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Thanks and goodbye.